When high-profile politicians baselessly claim foreign entities are paying protesters, they only exacerbate tensions. When liberal darling Nancy Pelosi went pseudo-MAGA alleging China or Russia paid protesters seeking a ceasefire in Israel's war on Gaza and suggested the FBI investigate them, it was like an episode of The Twilight Zone. It's a notion that immediately invokes thoughts of racist conspiracy theories often suggesting civil rights advocates were being paid by the U.S.'s perceived enemies, and in many cases, the Jews. False accusations against entire groups of non-white people are deeply embedded in Western white supremacy. For example, former President Donald Trump and his MAGA cronies invoked an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory when they weaponized this tactic and spread lies claiming George Soros paid Black Lives Matter protesters. It's a racist idea that dates back more than a century alleging, in part, that Jews were funding protests they considered anti-American. The same idea is once again being used to demonize migrants seeking asylum. The suggestion is that Jews are paying migrants thousands of dollars to cross the border into the U.S., a conspiracy theory spread among extremists and hate groups such as Active Club. A common theme is their pointing to Asian, African, and Middle Eastern asylum seekers to try convincing Latinos and the black community that those migrants are different. They do so using broad and prejudiced claims as they try to make the case that they're a threat to the general public. Whether intentionally or not, Pelosi's baseless accusations feed far-right narratives, thus highlighting how being conscious of what we say is arguably more important than ever. U.S. society, white people in particular, continues to fail to take extremism and hate seriously. When Pelosi invoked a trope that was much more common and bipartisan decades ago, she made it feel like false accusations against civil rights activists are becoming normalized again. Cue the Twilight Zone intro. Now we find ourselves on more tedious ground than at any time in recent memory. This is an issue that, in large part, falls on corporate media buying into and selling extremist propaganda that is being perpetuated by certain so-called news outlets and far-right personalities. A simple look at coverage of the border crisis and the October 7th assault on Israel by Hamas, along with continued one-sided and biased coverage of the slaughter in Gaza, provides some of the best looks into the colonialist and dehumanizing mindset of Western media toward non-white people. These perspectives help uphold racist, great replacement, conspiracy theories previously used by the Ku Klux Klan and adopted by the Nazis in World War II. Both instances claimed there was a plot being perpetrated by Jews to make white people a minority leading to their extinction. Variations of the concept date back to the founders at a time when Italians, French, Spaniards, and more weren't considered white. The founders feared the Germanization of the colonies would end the existence of the Anglo-Saxons in the New World. However, the notion of the Great Replacement exploded in popularity in 2011 after French author Renaud Camus published his book, Le Grande Remplacement. In it, he built on the white supremacist conspiracy theory by using migrants from Africa seeking asylum in Europe as an example of white extinction. With Camus' book garnering attention, neo-Nazis adopted the false idea that a grand effort to eliminate white people from the planet is underway. This brings us to false accusations. Damaging false accusations have always been a part of politics. However, once the libertarian movement launched itself into the political spotlight with the Tea Party during former President Barack Obama's presidency, things took a turn. Many of the loudest voices in the Tea Party espoused racist anti-black rhetoric. They brought David Duke-styled racism and extremism back into the mainstream after it was, seemingly, beaten back from the limelight after the civil rights era. The lines have blurred greatly between civil and political society over the last two decades. With that, so have false accusations. If we don't believe as someone else, we are labeled with an absurd amount of claims by the person holding opposing ideas. From more benign language like liberal or MAGA to more damning accusations of being a pedophile for simply speaking up for someone else's right to self-determination, a key tenet of freedom, Western society has seemingly gone batik crazy. To add to the infestation of accusatory tones and simple dialogue, we're now witnessing a broad campaign of falsely accusing others of anti-Semitism for their humanity. Calling for a ceasefire after tens of thousands have been killed isn't hateful, but it reminds us of so many being called terrorists for opposing the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. On the bright side, it seems as if more and more people are waking up to this dishonest debate tactic and are no longer fearing it. Despite growing awareness, when someone like Pelosi employs such falsehoods, it's worth looking at. Like hate speech and extremism, we can't deny that false accusations are growing just as fast. 
More dangerously, even law enforcement has gone overboard in employing the age-old tactic of finding something to charge people with. And knowing cops regularly commit perjury, they call it testing to ensure convictions, makes it all the more detrimental. Two recent examples come to mind. The cases of the Stop Cop City protesters in Atlanta and the Justice Aid in California and the excessive mafia-style charges for their organizing, advocacy, and activism are harrowing. In many cases, they seemingly committed no crime at all. We can't pretend that many false accusations don't stem from racist tropes. We've seen them used against indigenous people to explain away the genocide committed against them. We've seen them used against black people to justify their enslavement. We've seen them used against migrants to justify inhumanity. They're even used against Latinos and all other people of color to other them and uphold white people at the top of the social and economic hierarchy. And it's all rather shameful. As someone who has tracked and covered hate groups, extremists, and hate speech for more than 30 years, it isn't surprising that a society built on white supremacy still does this 60 years after the Civil Rights Act was passed. But we can't ignore that false accusations take attention off of potentially deadly bigots who seek to harm non-white groups and other marginalized communities while also setting back those of us who are trying to tackle the issue. Defamatory language towards civil and human rights advocates has a history of being used by white power structures as a tool to provide cover for racists and extremists. This is largely where false allegations of anti-white racism and anti-Semitism come from. Criticizing governments and their policies, whether in the U.S. or abroad, is what a civilized society is supposed to do. Trying to silence those voices gives the oppressors power and only puts more of us in danger. Elected officials should know better including Nancy Pelosi. Visit AntagonistMag.com for more.